Hey guys, it's Charlie and today I'm going to be doing my Banana Island Q&A along with tips video. So I'm at the park right now and there are kids around me and people playing and hi! <laughs> one ran away and one said hi. <laughs> So today I'm going to be answering some of your questions about Banana Island along with giving some tips for completing a successful Banana Island. Why did I do Banana Island? I actually did Banana Island because I recommended it to Annie as a way to reset your system or kind of allow your system to relax, especially in the terms of digestion. Most of the energy that we put towards digestion is taken away because you're eating one fruit and your body is able to digest it a lot better and it's a lot simpler on the body and by doing this you allow your body to rest in that area and focus on other areas to heal and I recommended it to Annie and she jumped right on it so we started the next day and we kind of didn't prepare and that's pretty much why I did Banana Island but personal reasons for doing it again this was my third one I did Banana Island again because I had such a good experience on my last two Banana Islands. Pretty much I did it in order to support Annie but also as my own personal goal to really become more aware of how I'm eating and have a better mental clarity. So that's why I did Banana Island. How many days did you do Banana Island? I did Banana Island this time for seven days and that's seven consecutive days. My first Banana Island was about five to seven days. I can't remember it very clearly, but I think I did a minimum of five days. And I think I did complete that Banana Island. My second Banana Island, I was aiming for seven days. That was the goal. But through temptation, I ended up only doing about six days, which sucks because I only had one day left, but I was just so thirsting for her other foods that I caved in. How many bananas did you eat a day? I didn't really count my bananas because I do come from a background of eating a high banana diet and a high calorie diet so I didn't really feel the need to calculate my calories but if you are someone who is not used to this lifestyle or style of eating I recommend that you go to chronometer and you eat a minimum of 20 bananas a day uh, that way you're getting all of the nutrients and energy that you need to sustain yourself but you should really aim to 25 and up because although you are cleansing your body you still need energy and if you're doing it for weight loss you can still lose weight because it's cleaning out your system flushing through your body and you're not polluting your body with a whole bunch of different types of foods also if you do it consistently by eating enough calories you'll be less tempted to eat other foods because you're fully satiated on bananas someone asked can you do less than seven days and the answer is yes you can do one day you can do three days you can do five days but the thing is if your goal is to cleanse the body i recommend no less than seven days but if you're just starting out you can try three days at a time so do three days and then a few weeks later try seven days but if you're really trying to get a good cleanse in your system and let your body rest seven days and up is the best someone asked aren't you eating too many bananas no i am not i personally have been eating bananas a high banana diet for the past two years and i have never felt better I feel healthier and I have more energy and my skin is clearer and I just feel the best on a higher banana diet and so no personally I am not eating too many bananas those of you who have experience with renal failure on the other hand do need to watch your banana intake because your kidneys are not functioning at the maximum or their normal capacity so you do need to watch out for your potassium intake but hyperkalemia is the condition of too much potassium in the blood and that is what you are watching out for if you have renal failure or some experience with uh, your kidneys not functioning at their normal or maximum potential 
Humans need about 4,800 milligrams of potassium a day and one banana has about 400 milligrams so it's about recommended to eat about 10 bananas 10 to 12 in order to get the minimum amount of potassium for your daily needs and what for example, average American is really eating 10 bananas. So the question isn't, are you getting too much potassium? It's, are you getting enough potassium? And so growing up, everyone told me, oh, only eat one banana because it's too much potassium. But in reality, we're not eating enough potassium. The lethal dose of potassium is 2,500 milligrams per kilo of body weight. And you need to eat that within about 30 seconds to get a lethal dose if you don't have uh, renal failure or any kidney problems. So for me, on average, it would be about, I don't know my weight, but around, somewhere around uh, 300 or 250 to 300 bananas in about 30 seconds, pretty much less than a minute. And I cannot eat that many bananas at once, so I don't really have any issues with that. The reason why there are so many vegans or high raw vegans thriving on this lifestyle is because if you have normal functioning kidneys like most of the world, your body will excrete any excess potassium that is not needed. So that is why I, for example, have been able to feel so good on a high banana diet for the past two years. It's because my kidneys are normal functioning kidneys and they, if I do get more than enough potassium, my kidneys will excrete the excess. Someone else asked, what about too much sugar? Am I getting too much sugar? I personally am not getting too much sugar. I am a healthy person. I have gone to the doctor and I'm healthy. I'm not, I don't have, they've never warned me that I'm eating too much sugar. I feel my best eating a high fruit and high sugar <laughs> diet and I just feel my best and my skin is clearest when I eat a high fruit, high banana diet. The other question is, can you do a fruit island instead of a banana island? And the answer is yes. Uh, about two years ago, I did a one, one month raw vegan challenge and I only ate raw foods. And this is very healthy. I actually think this is a good stepping stone towards a banana island. So if you want to do a one week raw vegan challenge, then you can do that. But the thing is about Banana Island is bananas are great because it can sustain you for a very long time and it's giving your body a break from so many different types of foods. And that is the reason why Banana Island or a mono island diet is very good. You can also choose to do, instead of Banana Island or a vegan raw diet or one week raw is do one week bananas, one week watermelon, one week mangoes, one week papaya. You're able to sustain it for a lot longer because you're getting variety in your diet and you're getting a lot of variety of nutrients at different times. And yeah, so it's a little bit better for those of you who one, don't like bananas or cannot eat bananas for that long. Another thing you can do instead of week by week, changing up the fruit is doing day by day. So one day you do Banana Island on that day, the next day you do Watermelon Island, and the next day Papaya Island, <laughs> something like that. But this is the best if you are in a place where the fruit is cheap and you can get a variety of different fruits. Another way to do it is doing a mono meal per meal. So breakfast is only bananas, um, but actually I would switch that around breakfast is all only watermelon because it's the quickest to digest the next one is like papaya and the last one is all bananas for dinner so you're doing it by meal instead of by day or instead of by week there are many varieties of ways to do it but one of the great challenges is doing a one week mono fruit because it's so easy on the digestion and it's also not only physically good for you but it's also mentally a good experience to see what it's like to eat 
all fruit, one type of fruit for the whole time. Another question is, what about tooth decay? I don't want to eat that much fruit because I'm going to rot my teeth. Well, the funny thing is that people on average can drink soda throughout the day and no one questions their you know, intake. But once you say you're eating fruit throughout the day, people question, oh no, it's too much sugar. <laughs> I think it's pretty funny how we are so conditioned to see fruit as the evil in the world. But in reality, no, I'm not afraid of fruit. I have some tips on lessening your chances of tooth decay and cavities and all of those things. Any diet, every diet, as you can see, there is a chance of getting cavities and tooth problems. Growing up, I grew up on a meat diet and I got cavities. Why? It wasn't the sugar that I was eating and the candy. What was it? Was I not taking care of my teeth? Who knows, but every diet has some form of tooth decay. There are ways to take care of your teeth and it's all about knowing how to do that and I will share that in a little bit. Was I bored of bananas? No, I was not bored of bananas. I pretty much changed up the way that I was eating my bananas. In the morning, I would have a smoothie. For lunch, I might chop up the bananas and eat them in little chunks or slices. For dinner, I might have a banana soup with celery, or I might make a banana ice cream, or drink it into different types of glasses to make it feel like I'm having some different variety and different textures. And it's really a good way to kind of feel like you're having something different even though it's all the same fruit. How spotty do I like my bananas? I like my bananas spotted to where not where they just started spotting but a little bit past the just spotting and then i also don't like to eat them too dark if the bananas are too dark all around i will use that in a smoothie but usually i like to eat whole bananas perfectly ripened not just ripened but in between that stage of underripe and too ripe <laughs> Did I wake up wanting other foods? No, I did not. I actually woke up feeling rejuvenated. I felt like it was a reset to my body to go to sleep. It was like my body reset itself and I didn't even eat bananas all day yesterday. It was kind of like a whole new start and I felt like I could continue eating bananas again. Would I do Banana Island for one month? My answer personally is no, only because I do like variety. I like watermelon and other things. Here in Korea, I probably would do one month only because that's the cheapest fruit here compared to watermelon and mangoes. So if I were still in Korea, I would do one month on bananas. But if I were, for example, in Thailand or in the US and it was summertime in the US and there was abundance of watermelons for cheap and papayas, I would like to mix it up. For example, one week of bananas, one week uh, papaya, one week watermelon, something like that. That way I get some variety and make it a little more exciting. Why didn't I use green bananas? I don't like green bananas. <laughs> I feel that bananas are best when they are ripe and starting to spot. I can tell on this banana island, it was my first time ever attempting to eat unripe bananas because Annie and I ended up running out of ripe bananas. I, this is my first time doing banana island with someone together where we're sharing bananas and I wasn't prepared for how many bananas I would need to buy and also in Korea the bananas were so expensive that we were eating so many that it would be a lot more to pay so we're trying to buy ripe bananas already but some of the bananas we ended up eating were not ripe yet and it left a very filmy ugh, filmy feeling in my mouth. It was just very uncomfortable and I now and during this experience realized that I really do enjoy eating ripe bananas and underripe bananas. Even the bananas that people on average enjoy and say taste better when they're not spotted at all taste horrible to me. They just leave a really bad taste in my mouth and I think that's just from experience of eating 
properly ripe bananas the past two years. Do you need fancy equipment to do Banana Island? No, you don't need fancy equipment to do Banana Island. Actually, you don't need any equipment. You can, you don't even need a blender. If you want, you can just eat fully whole bananas or if you have a very cheap blender, it's perfectly fine. I have two blenders. One is a more expensive, kind of similar to a high-tech Vitamix, but not as amazing as the Vitamix, of course. It's a Korean brand and unfortunately, the last day of Banana Island, it failed on me, it broke. Yeah, it was really funny. It was an experience in itself because like I said in my daily vlogs, some things are gonna come up and challenges are gonna happen. And that was one of mine. My blender broke and I ended up reverting to my old blender, which was under $20 or 20,000 won. And it has still kept up with me and all of the <laughs> smoothies that I make. I have used it for a very long time. And even though it was so cheap, it still does me very well. So you don't need a lot of equipment. You just need a blender or no blender at all and eat whole bananas, chop up bananas. You don't need any fancy equipment. I have a few dental tips that I would like to share with you. And the first one is to eat set meals. Don't snack on bananas all throughout the day. Eat separate meals and eat them within a decent amount of time to where you're not leaving the fruit just sitting on your teeth. You're allowing your enamel to harden back up. So for example, breakfast, you eat breakfast and you eat it within 30, minutes and you have lunch and you eat that one within 30 to 40 minutes and the same with dinner this allows for your enamel to harden back up after eating the fruit and you're not just sitting there letting the fruit just be on your teeth the whole time your saliva is clearing up the fruit that you had and just kind of resetting everything so you're just not letting fruit sit on your teeth the next one is to avoid dried fruits dried fruits just sit and stick to your teeth and that will just pretty much cause more cavities and more dental issues so dried fruits like if you're adding dates or dried bananas or something like that try and not do that too much because it will stick to your teeth and that will cause further tooth damage avoid drinking your smoothies for a long period of time. This goes back to my first tip, which is to not eat all throughout the day. Don't spend about, you know, like an hour and a half on your smoothie. Try and drink it within 30 minutes. That way you are avoiding the amount of time that the fruit is going onto your teeth. And this is something that you see a lot within the vegan community, especially when you're first starting. You're trying to get used to eating large quantities of fruit. This next tip is to avoid brushing your teeth right after you eat a meal. Allow your enamel to harden. It takes about 20 to 30 or 40 minutes for it to harden. That way you're not just brushing all of the, <laughs> the fruit into your teeth. You wanna allow your enamel to harden before you brush your teeth. I usually brush my teeth before I eat my meal and then I brush my teeth again at night before I go to bed. And in between that, if you feel like a fear of, you know, sugar or something on your teeth, just rinse your mouth out or floss and that will allow for your teeth to have a break in between meals. I will post a link in the description box for another channel that I found. It's a wonderful woman who is a dental hygienist and she has some, some tips on being raw vegan and dental care and I think you should really check it out because she even shows you how to brush your teeth and how to floss and it's very a very good video so the link will be in the description box. Some tips for starting Banana Island. The first one is to prepare ahead of time about a week. You want to start eliminating the amount of food you have in your house that is not bananas. This is unfortunate for those of you who live with other people. It's better for if you live alone because you're not tempted by other foods, but definitely prepare by eating up all of the foods you have. 
and that way when you start banana island you only have bananas in your house so you will only eat bananas if you're a first timer to banana island you might want to try just easing into it by doing a three-day banana island and then a few weeks later preparing for a seven-day banana island or longer this allows you to kind of ease up to the experience. I know that this third banana island for me was a lot easier than my first two and by experience and over time you just get better and better. The next tip is to buy your box of bananas ahead of time that way you allow time for them to ripen. This was an issue for me because here uh, the bananas were expensive and I was really trying so hard to find deals and I didn't have enough bananas so I ended up eating less on some days and you can see that in my daily vlogs for the banana island. Uh, there were days that I didn't eat enough bananas and I just pushed through it. It was really the last two days and it's really good to have more than you need. So be sure to do that especially if you're first starting out you don't want to get tempted or be hungry or feel like okay this is not working out i don't have enough ripe bananas so i'm just gonna quit be sure to stock up ahead of time consider that you will need to allow time for your bananas to ripen so you're going to buy your bananas uh, again after you bought the first bunch and started banana island about two days later you're going to need to buy another bunch and allow for them to start ripening add greens to your diet for banana island you don't want to feel like you have to be so strict that you can't eat greens greens are a great plus and a great complement to the bananas they add a lot of minerals that you won't get from eating bananas and I really recommend that and that is something I can't stress if you want the best experience on banana island I definitely think adding greens will definitely help get you there things like kale spinach uh, leafy greens any other leafy greens that you can think of I definitely recommend celery I noticed that I was kind of craving celery and that saltiness in the celery so definitely consider adding those and plan on adding those into your banana island on a daily basis do banana island with a family member or a loved one or a friend and it will make your experience a lot more fun you'll give be able to encourage each other and that's definitely something that i noticed this time it was my first time doing banana island with someone else and i definitely felt more connected to annie after doing banana island together i had a lot of experiences and revelations on banana island one of which is noticing how i might end up eating out of boredom or eating because of my emotional situation or you know just emotional eating i noticed that I had some interesting dreams. I had a dream that I was eating bananas for one of my banana island days. A thing that I did benefit from is realizing when to eat until I'm satisfied and eating when I'm hungry and not just eating out of boredom. I did notice a difference in my bowel movements along the banana island. The first two days were more short and like plops and the last few days were a lot more fluffy and full i also experienced no gas on banana island which was a great experience and i noticed it until i got off of banana island i realized i had didn't have as much gas or farting as i did before banana island so that was alleviated and now that i'm back off of banana island i do notice some gas but it's not as bad as before i experienced a lot of mental clarity from doing this banana island i was able to think clearer i had a better relationship with food and after i got off banana island i felt like i could eat a lot more simply i really noticed how much i ate salt on banana island or before banana island i realized after doing banana island that i do consume more salt than i thought i did and now that i'm off of banana island i can see that and i also even notice that i prefer to eat white rice over brown rice because it digests so much easier and it tastes better and i didn't notice that before banana island also clearer skin if you're doing it for clear skin your skin might get worse during banana island and it might not clear up until later if you go off of banana island and eat a cleaner diet you will see most likely benefits in your skin but it does take time you can't expect results after years of treating your body bad and think one week is going to clear up everything i usually notice a difference in my skin weeks after banana island and not during banana island 
So thank you guys for watching and subscribing. I hope you enjoyed my video. And don't forget to check the link in the description box for my playlist on my Banana Island daily vlogs. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like it if it helped. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.